That format is the April 2014 format of Yu-Gi-Oh! This format came out after the infamous Dragon Ruler format and the less remembered Fire Water format, but also before the release of Duelist Alliance, featuring the release of Shadal's and Burning Abyss. This format was named after the deck Hand Artifact Trap Tricks, which, while not being the best deck in the format, is extremely notable for being such an innovative deck and is the perfect encapsulation of what makes this format special. First off, Hat Format is a very trap-heavy format. It is one of the last formats where this would be the case, at least insofar as every deck relying on back row. In this format, blowout traps like Torrential Tribute, Solemn Warning, Compulsory Evacuation Device, and Bottomless Trap Hole are limited due to how much game pressure they can put on an opponent. Since a lot of decks this format depend on a normal summon, this makes the traps very flexible and very powerful. This format also features the release of the Artifact and Hand Engine. Artifacts providing a little bit of a negative incentive for an opponent's removal, as well as some more powerful traps this format. The Artifact Engine also provided access to the surprisingly powerful lineup of Rank 5 XYZs. Hands provided an amazing Go Second tool and removal option for decks that needed to fill space. That brings us to the extra deck this format. The extra deck is extremely toolbox heavy. In modern Yu-Gi-Oh, most extra deck spaces are filled by engine pieces, but in hat format, most spaces are filled by monsters that provide answers to every particular situation and every particular matchup. Powerful options such as the Comeback Board Wipe Evil Exiton Knight, the Removal God Silent Honor Arc, and the currently banned for good reason Lavaval Chain. There are very few relevant quick effect disruptions on extra deck cards, at least not anything super generic. Constellar Pleiades is an amazing option because most decks don't have an easily comparable card this format. Synchro monsters are still ran, but most relevant archetypes at this time prefer to just ignore the hassle of tuner monsters. Here's a breakdown of this game's meta in modern times. First thing you'll probably notice is that Artifact Trap Trick have a ton of variants, by just being one of the best engines in the game. Interesting note on the subject of Hat not being the best version of At, this is a very interesting realization people came to, specifically towards the later end of the Hat format, and even later once this format came back as a popular legacy format. Remember, most formats and games aren't solved. Back to some of the other meta decks this format. There are a lot of them. We have Girgia, Mythic Rulers, and Medulce as our Mythic Ground, mostly control decks with combo options. We have Mermail, Sylvans, Lightsworns, and Infernity as our strong combo options this format. Lastly, we have Spellbook, Bujins, and Evil Swarms as our Stun and Floodgate decks. There are of course a wide variety of other decks and strategies available, and specific builds of each deck. This video will also cover popular rogue strategies, such as Battling Boxers, Gadgets, Worms, and my personal copium, Noble Knights. The variety of decks is one of the main reasons this format is so beloved. I will be explaining each deck with a deck list, a breakdown of major combos, and a general guide to how they play. I will also include information about this deck's modern price, anything budget is less than $40, and anything expensive is over $100. The vast majority of decks are budget this format. Starting off we have Hat, Hands Artifact Trap Tricks. The Trap Tricks engine provides access to Bottomless Trap Hole and Trap Tricks Hole Nightmare consistently. Dianea provides a later access to rank 4 by recurring Mermelo. Trap Tricks also synergize with generic revival cards such as Soul Charge and Call of the Haunted. These let us trigger their second effects for removal and recursion. Do note that the Trap Tricks engine can also side deck Acid Trap Hole for Girgia and other flip matchups. The hands let us go second without much worry. We can use them to crash into an opponent's monsters repeatedly and wipe their boards. Remember, hands have a win effect trigger and have to fully resolve to get the next summon, and as such, they are vulnerable to disruption. Lastly, the artifact engine provides protection to our back row by punishing our opponent's removal, as well as being disruptions themselves. The deck is all around very solid, and it is vulnerable to Royal Decree, as well as decks that can outgrind it. Hat, of course, is a budget option, with the only notable expensive cards being Evil Swam Exiton Knight and the optional Max C. The better build is, of course, Cat. Featuring the hand engine replaced by card card D, basically changing out the niche removal of hands for the draw power of card card D, thus enabling a much, much stronger grind game. The deck still maintains the full trap tricks and artifact engines, but makes a few additions, including Beagle Tech for easier access to rank 5 plays after one or two resolutions of an artifact ignition or a set artifact. This list also features more back row removal options, such as artifact ignition and double cyclone replacing MST for cards that actively push its game plan. The Artifact Engine really pushes us into making Constellar Pleiades, as is one of the best disruptions and removal options this format. This deck is still a budget option, having the same expensive cards as Hat. 
Our next popular list is Gyrgyo. Gyrgyo are a deck about setups and crazy OTKs. Gyrgyo Armor is a searcher when he's flip summoned, and Gyrgyo Gear is a trap that sets us up for a rank 4. I recommend using it on the opponent's end phase to play around disruption. The second phase of this deck is to abuse Gear Gear Accelerator to spam special summon himself to the field, as well as using Gear Gigant X to repeatedly and recursively search Accelerator for even more plays. Some combination of monster spam should OTK your opponent, or at least put them in a terrible situation. For you players looking to get into hat format casually, I recommend picking this up as a deck. It's both very fun, very straightforward, and probably the cheapest option on the list, outside of the optional maxi. Perhaps the biggest issue with Gyrgyas is their potential to brick or their ability to sometimes get rushed down and overwhelmed by faster decks. Most builds throw in some sort of outside engine like Karakuri or the more popular hands to fill up the deck's holes and weaknesses. Mermills are the most popular combo deck for modern events in this format. It's not hard to see why. Mermills are one of the most explosive combo decks, being able to easily spam the board out with monsters to such an extent as to immediately win the game in some cases. While the deck is certainly not invincible thanks to the power of the side deck, Mermills put a lot of pressure on the opponent to play perfectly to shut down their plays, which can often play through more than one disruption. Throughout the early game, Mermails used three main cards to fish for value. Junox Undying, Abyss Spear, and Mermail Abyss Spike. Junox Undying lets us send any of our Mermails and Atlanteans from deck to the graveyard, while also putting Janox Controller in our hand. Janox Controller serves as both discard fodder, and he opens us up for synchro plays. Usually this will just be Black Rose or Leer the Keeper of the Sacred Tree. Abyss Spear lets us summon any Mermail monster from our deck and then destroy it on our opponent's end phase. This can both be used as an extender, but will more commonly be used to summon and destroy Mermail Abyss Lined to go into any other Mermail from our deck. Abyss Spike lets us search Marksman, Gen X Undying, and Abyss Agund. Mermails as a deck are typically doing small plays to fiend for value until they can fully go crazy. Of course, once you do enough of these small plays, you'll most likely have won the game by default. This is a middle price deck for hat format. Having some Mermel cards of value, as well as needing expensive extra deck cards like number 11 Big Eye and Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. Infernity is a wombo combo deck that focuses on abusing a few problem cards in this format, specifically the Vavil Change and Soul Charge. Infernities are a build a bill combo deck, but there are a few things you can do consistently. By using Lavavel Chain to send Archfiend Harris to the graveyard, we can search Infernity Archfiend or the Archfiend Field spell for combo extension. Stygian Street Patrol lets us summon any fiend type monster from our hand when he's in the grave. Instant Fusion is a big play starter as it gets you another material for Lavavel Chain. Of course, using these cards in various combinations will grant you some variety of Infernity Barrier and Infernity Break. Infernity has struggled a lot in modern events due to the popularity of both DD Crow and Maxi in the main deck inside. Sylvans are THE Soul Charge deck. In order to set up the graveyard, Sylvans use three cards, Lone Fire Blossom, Sylvan Comos Room, and Curry Bandit. Curry Bandit is the most notable card here, and it can add any spell or trap excavated in the top five cards. Remember, this is a slower format, so taking a turn without developing into a board just so we can set up is a valid strategy. Sylvans also use Miracle Fertilizer to recur the graveyard and Sylvan Charity to dig for engine pieces. Sylvans build an in board of rank 8 and 7 monsters, featuring cards like Felgrand the Divine Dragon Knight, Big Eye, and Oria the High Sylvan Arbiter. All these grant crazy removal and protection to our board. Sylvans are the most expensive deck on this list, having a main deck that averages about a dollar per card and an extra deck that is filled with some expensive options, particularly Felgrand and Big Eye. Prophecy are a stun control deck, utilizing a recursive set of spell cards that limit our opponent's plays and slowly accrue value for us. The deck is surprisingly strong with Spellbook of Fate's Banishing Removal and Spellbook of Power's ability to disrupt hands. Generally, you'll want to open Magician, Secrets, Duality, or Library in order to get your engine started. With these, you'll be able to set up your grave with Spellbooks to set up Spellbook of Fate as a disruption and Spellbook Power to recycle the one Fate and give you a plus one each turn. By keeping the setup live, you will be able to slowly remove threats each turn and gain advantage to grind out your opponent. Spellbooks are a medium price deck, since some of the spellbook cards are sought after in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! As well as the extra deck utilizing expensive cards like Big Eye. The deck struggles to go second in some matchups and is a very high skill ceiling. Do note, Spellbook of Judgment is banned this format. White Swarms are the fan favorite Mill Turbo deck. In this format, they have a ton of powerful options that aren't banned yet. Destiny Hero Malicious is at 3, Eclipse Wyvern who can search Judgment Dragon isn't banned, the Dragon Rulers are all at 1, and lastly, the Wyvern Busters aren't limited. Unfortunately though, Charge of the Light Brigade is limited. So you have a ton of gas, 
but it ends up a bit too slow to consistently access. Once this deck gets going, it is unstoppable, but you're racing to do that against some very powerful stun options and some much faster combo options in this format. Plus, you can always brick. The deck ranges from cheap to moderately priced, depending on what build you choose. Bujins are either a control or a floodgate stun deck. The game plan is incredibly simple. Summon Bujin Yamato. Use Yamato to put some of our protection Bujins in Grave. And lastly, put up some floodgates like Kaiser Colosseum, Vanity's Emptiness, or just generic trap cards. This is very hard to out, and can win some games on its own. We've also got Buj Incarnation for Recursion. This card is so strong in the deck, it replaces Soul Charge. The deck also has an astonishing 9 cards to dig for Yamato, Fire Formation Tanky, Pot of Duality, and in some builds, Upstart Goblin. Bujins as a deck really do need to go first, and this reflects in their ability to win games. Bujins also struggle in some matchups with non-targeting removal. This deck is budget with no notable expensive cards outside of Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. Here's a section delivered by Aram, a fellow YouTuber whose channel you should check out if you like hat format content. Oh, is it my turn? This late? Thought Constellars will be earlier considering it's the best deck of all time, baby, let's go! Constellars are a much, much more aggressive version of artifacts, being able to win on turn 3 or 5 with relative ease by styling the opponent for a turn or 2 with play this and moral attack and doing some serious damage. This is because Constellars are able to make play this on turn 1, which uh, backed up by artifacts uh, stops any decks in its tracks. Alternatively, you can just make Tsukuyomi to draw 4 cards over 2 turns, artifact to Randall in various situations, or Dweller for Mermails. The main issue with the deck is consistency, which can be solved by streamlining the deck a lot, but that means your deck lacks tech options. Another issue is back rows and hand traps, but you can just play a lot of hate for those. Lastly, the deck can run out of steam quite quickly after the first few turns, but that's not too much of an issue when you're that strong out of the gate. The deck is great if you want to play a combo deck, but you are too scared of cockroaches to play a combo deck, and if you already built that, it's a very easy conversion to uh, the deck, considering you already have all the extra deck and uh, the expensive part of the main deck. Anyways, check out my YouTube channel Aureum if you want to see more long-form content on hot format, and back to you, Justin. Mythic Rulers is what Dragon Rulers look like after they all got limited. They're still an extremely powerful deck that just does so much it's hard to describe. They can Skill Drain plus Ruler Beatdown, Wombo Combo into Stardust Felgrand Draco Sack, or just grind pretty well. It's just the most adaptable combo deck in the format is my point. We can break down the deck into its most basic setups. Dragon Shrine, Cards of Consonants, and Trade-In form a system to fill up the graveyard and cycle through our cards. Remember, we can loop the Dragon Rulers from our graveyard and generate constant threats. This also means the deck is amazing at abusing Soul Charge. The deck's biggest weakness is its lack of exploration. It wasn't the most popular deck historically, and it still isn't much loved now. The deck is at the higher price range due to its reliance on expensive extra deck staples like Felgrand and Big Eye. Madolshes are an XYZ combo tempo deck. What makes them stand out is the fantastic boss monster, Tierra Misu, a rank 4 XYZ monster with a double non-targeting shuffle back into the deck. For reference, it's still a very solid card when made today, regardless of how the rest of the archetype holds up. This deck's combos are very simple. Hootcake pulls out any Madolshe monster from the deck, Madolshe and Jelly tags out in the Madolshe Hootcake, and gives it a material to use for its effect. Hootcake searches for Mess and Gelato, who searches for Madolshe Ticket, giving us the setup for some crazy plays. This deck can also abuse MX Saver Invoker. It's a weird deck to handle in this format, but a very solid one once you get a feel for it. Madolshe have a unique problem this format, specifically how hard it is to create a good deck list for this strategy. Typically the deck is paired with artifacts, and the deck is middle priced. And Jelly and Magilene aren't expensive, but they do add up. Evil Swarm are a rank 4 spam deck, with access to one of the best rank 4 cards in the game. Evil Swarm, Ophion. Ophion turns off the summoning of all level 5 or higher monsters, as well as having searching for protection. That is more or less the entire deck. The rest is just generic trap cards and staples. Evil Swarms of course really struggle against decks without level 5 monsters, and really do want to go first against the matchups they do like to play against. Evil Swarms are a mid-priced deck, thanks to Evil Swarm Exeton Knight, as well as a few other Evil Swarm cards not being dirt cheap. Battle and Boxers are a rank 4 toolbox deck, with a tool for every situation. Between the Warrior only XYZs and Battling Boxers own XYZs, it's just a fun underrated deck to play. The main card this deck evolves around is Battling Box Who Lead Yoke, a very easy to make rank 4 monster that is hard to out for a lot of decks. The main benefit of this game plan are that making lead yoke is incredibly easy to do. 
And in the late game, you have multiple cards that make lead yoke on their own, while also putting a lot of damage on the field to have offensive pressure. This strategy also doesn't need that much space in the deck, so you can dedicate a lot of space to trap cards and general utility cards like the hands. Battling boxers are a cheap deck this format, with the only notable expensive cards being Evil Swarm Exiton Knight and the optional Maxi. Gadgets are a rank 4 spam deck. They have the simple premise of comboing a gadget monster with an extender like Ten Goldfish or Kaga Takage for an XYZ summon each turn. The deck uses King of the Feral Imps and Gear Gigant X for the second half of the needed search. All this makes for a faster, yet much less explosive, Gear Gia. This deck can also make use of rank up magic cards for access to monsters which are just hilarious. This deck typically looks to fill up its empty space with the hand engine. The deck is relatively weak and struggles to keep up with faster decks, but a good player can do a lot with it and just overwhelm opponents once it gets going. The deck is middle price wise, as it does kind of practically require a max C, as well as Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. Noble Knights are a Copium Towers deck that I just really like to play personally. They use Noble Knight Madrot to summon Noble Knight Boars from the deck and set up for a big Towers type XYZ monster. The deck cannot do this consistently, and the deck's end goal actively blocks out your spell and trap zones. But it is really funny. The deck has no real recursion, so it ends up relying a lot on outside engines like artifacts, or just getting really lucky with a max C. Honestly, just good luck with this one. I just wanted to talk about Noble Knights again. This deck is moderately priced, thanks to the rank 4 Arthrogus, spiking in price for some reason. The side deck to this format is very simple. Pick some matchups you lose to by default, and put in cards to counter them. Afraid of artifacts? Side deck DD Crow to remove them from play when they're sent to grave. Afraid of Gyrgya? Side deck Flying Sea and Black Horn of Heaven. Afraid of Mermail? Side deck Soul Drain. Most side deck cards will hit multiple decks, so you don't have to worry too too much about the rogue options. It's definitely a format to learn into, but it's a rewarding experience to explore options for. Thanks to everyone from the Hat Format Discord for helping me write sections of this list, and helping me write parts of my website. If you want a list of side deck staples and staples in general, check out my website's guide to Hat Format. The website also has deck lists for every deck covered here, as well as links to historical and modern deck lists for these decks. If you want to play in future events, check out the Hat Format Discord. Both of these resources are linked in the description below. You can also check out the format library for other events for a variety of other historical formats. Thanks for watching. If you like the style of in-depth guide, please bottom this trap hole that subscribe button. Hat format content is something that's never super common on my channel, but something I like to keep up with, since it's such a fun format and I have to support the people still playing it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.